Hello everybody and welcome to another painting tutorial. I'm John and in this one we're going to be tackling a Citadel or Warhammer 40,000 Howling Banshee from the Eldari or the Eldar if you want to use the older name. Uh, I have wanted to paint one of these since the plastic kits came out and I'm finally getting a chance to do it and I'm really happy with how she turned out. Uh, a lot of simple techniques, just dry brushing and base coating, putting a few things down, washes here and there, um, using a couple of technical paints, some contrast paints. There's a little bit of a mixed bag in this one, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And uh, without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about the priming of our Banshee here. And uh, what I started off with was Citadel's Zandri Dust Aerosol. And that was primed over the entire miniature, made sure we got 100% coverage or as close as we can get. After that, I've then taken the Wraithbone aerosol and sprayed it more or less top down, but I was changing the angle, you know, I was rotating the miniature and keeping the, the uh, angle of the, the aerosol can consistent. So what we've got is a, a bit more of a subtle pre-shade than what some of you guys would uh, usually see from me. Um, but because... The Banshee's primary colour is this bone colour. I figured that if we're priming it, we're going to go up through Xandri dust and sort of make the make the Xandri almost like the, the shadow. So anything we apply to this after that is basically just accentuating that shadow a little bit. So from this point, there's one or two ways we can do this. We could start with a dry brush to tidy things up a little bit, or we could go straight into our first contrast paint. And I think we're probably in this instance just gonna go straight into some contrast. And for that, we're basically gonna be looking at Skeleton Horde, and we're gonna be applying that over the entire miniature. Uh, we're gonna be doing that because that will basically set our base color for the, the rest of the Banshee, uh, or at least every piece of armor that she's wearing. So, We'll get our Skeleton Horde onto our brush and we'll start to apply it. Now I don't go heavy with contrast paints. I don't think um, this one heavy coat uh, mentality really works with some of these contrast paints, particularly the thinner ones, because the what ends up happening is as the contrast starts to shade, it starts to pull just a little bit too much for my liking. It's not as neat as uh, I would like it to be. So. I tend not to just slap it on, which of course you can do. Uh, so the whole idea is you can just slap this paint on, it'll shade and accentuate your highlights and you're done then. But if you go a little bit thinner with it, a little more careful, you get far better control over that end result. You get a slightly tidier end result as well, which is pretty important. So with an emphasis on making sure that each step adds something to the miniature without requiring too much um, tidying up afterwards, I tend to just take the contrast paint a little bit more subtle, a little bit thinner than what um, what's recommended, which is absolutely fine. It just tightens those lines up a little bit in the shade. Plus we're also trying to emphasis, uh, put an emphasis on ease and speed of the, the actual painting. So going a bit thinner means less tidy up and hopefully a, t a, a nice tight result. So we'll just go on ahead, just make sure we're not missing anything as we go around. This is what I love about this, this, minute, this, this handle as well. I can just sit and rotate it to my heart's content and make sure I've caught everything I want to catch. At this stage, things I'm not worried about is any of the detail on her armor. We're just trying to make sure that we get this color down. And then after that, we'll look at maybe a dry brush or something like that, just to bring up the brightness again, because Banshees are meant to be quite pale. Um, according to their art and stuff like that, they they look quite pale, and it's it's one of the aspects of the the Howling Banshee that I particularly like is that sort of pale, ghostly sort of appearance to them with the big flash of red for the hair. I think it just they're such to me they're one of the most iconic units in the Eldari or the the Eldar as they were formerly called. And 
And I will say I've wanted to paint one of these for a very long time. Ever since the contrast paints came out as well, I was like, this is my time to do, to paint Eldar. So I'm finally getting a chance to do it. Make sure we've got underarm. And then we'll just work up onto the helmet. We're not too worried about the helmet at this stage, you know, eye lenses and stuff like that. Although at the same time, I don't necessarily want the contrast to pull too much into the face details. It will regardless, but I'm trying to control it a little bit so that it just doesn't do that. Make sure we've got our arm. Okay, so you can already see the paint is starting to dry and we're starting to get a nice looking effect here. We'll make sure we get under her foot. You can see what I mean by going a little bit more subtle as well. We don't want to ruin it too much. Make sure we get that, that protrusion under the arm. Cool, so what we'll do now is let this dry, and when we come back, we'll start to look uh, towards some of our, our basic highlighting on her armor. We'll focus on her armor for a little bit first uh, before we start working on uh, the other details. So we'll let this dry, and when we come back, we'll start our highlighting. With the skeleton horde now dry, we can have a look at uh, what our banshee's appearing to look like right now, and that's not bad. Going a little bit thinner with the contrast paint in this case, has helped keep those shade lines nice and tight and that's exactly what I've been looking for. So from here we're going to start a dry brush onto the armor and we're going to be using Tyrant Skull first, uh, Citadel Tyrant Skull. So we'll be using that and using a medium, uh, yeah this is a medium dry brush. So it's quite a large one so it's kind of going to be more of a, an overall uh, sort of dry brush here hoping that this paint hasn't actually completely dried out. It doesn't look like it has, which is fine. So this is the first step of bringing the Wraithbone colour, the brightness of the Wraithbone, back out again. And we'll be starting by doing this. So let's have a look here and see what we can do. So we want to have an overall kind of dry brush effect here. We want as much of her to get some of this dry brush as possible because uh, then we'll do a second dry brush with Wraithbone which will bring everything just up a little bit more and a little closer to the original base colour which is kind of what I'm aiming for here. And we're doing this in an effort to further tighten up the shading that the contrast paint is providing us. So particularly on this leg. So anything where she's sort of hyper extending, so like on this leg, on this arm, there's a lot of surfaces that are going to catch a lot of light. So we want to make sure that those are the more focused areas for our, our um, highlighting. So not as much on the inside of her right leg. And when we come to do the, the Wraithbone dry brush after this, we'll probably not touch that at all. We'll just let that sit the way it is. So at the minute, that's okay. I think a little bit more won't go amiss here. And I have noticed that my paint is a little bit drier than it needs to be, or should be. That's a bit of a problem, but it's not the worst. And the only problem with doing this miniature, this one that I chose in particular, is that she's quite lithe. She's only got one contact point to the base, which does make her a little bit bendy and a little bit annoying that way. But I thought it was the nicest pose out of the set, so... I'm 
and get the top of her shuriken, shuriken pistol. Get that, that face plate in. Sorry, I'm wandering so much on the camera. The idea is to have her armor plates, at least her armor plates, have a very smooth appearance. And doing a very, doing light dry brushes of color just to bring it up very slowly is a pretty good way to do it. Get the toe of that foot there. Okay, so that isn't too bad. Quite happy with that. Now, let's switch over to our wraith bone. And that will be the highest part, or the highest colour required. I need to give this a bit of a shake. Because it's been a while since I used it. And it's a base paint, so it's a little bit thicker than the others and does tend to separate a bit. So we're going to have to prep it on the brush. We're switching down to a small dry brush for this step. Um, mainly because we want to be a lot more focused with the areas that we're actually hitting with it. Alright, so we want the top of her thigh here. Going down onto this piece of her armour and catch that knee as well. on her chest and there's a little bit of an edge on that shoulder pad and this part of her arm and then we want to get as much really onto the face mask as possible we want to bring that up a fair bit more than the rest make that one of the defining features of the miniature And what I'm doing is I'm brushing vertically up the way, so I'm catching the brow, I'm catching the chin, the brow, and the openings of the vents on either side of her helm. And as I work around the side, we bring that colour around a little bit more. And then over onto the arm. And hopefully you can see that this is starting to bring her back up again to that almost wraith bone brightness. But it's it's already, in, in my opinion, it's already giving her a sense of presence. So we'll prep some more paint on the brush. These base paints are decent for doing dry brush with. You just got to be careful and take a little bit of extra time to remove more paint off the brush than you would if you were just using the uh, the dry paint. And after that, we want to look towards the back here a bit, sort of catch some of these details that are remaining in a little bit of shadow. And then work down this leg. to this arm where there's not as much going on there's a fair amount of it in shadow but we want to bring up some of the muscle definition on her on her upper arm as well as this protrusion here underneath Okay, so 
that's looking pretty decent. Quite happy with how she's looking there. We we'll get a bit more onto her helm. And across the top of her chest, particularly in the leading part of her chest here, there would be a bit more of a highlight going on across her shoulder and down onto her chest. And I think that's looking pretty decent. Now, of course, we could go on and start to hard edge certain parts, but we don't really want to be doing that if we're trying to get this ready for the table, you know. Um, we don't want to focus too hard on some of these details. So, with that said, I'm going to say that the base colour of the armour is done. I'm quite happy with how that looks. I think the um, the skeleton horde and the two dry brushes have really helped over the prime. Now it's hard to tell at this stage just how much we're gaining in shading uh, from the Zandri dust. However, though, when you look up at the miniature like this, the Zandri dust is far more prevalent. But even from a level, sort of eye level, there is plenty going on there, just in that armor color alone. I think that's quite interesting looking. So, with that said, we'll probably move on to some basic, uh, yeah, I think we'll move on to some basic coloration here now. So, we're going to start on her mane here, this amazing looking mane. And to begin work on that, we're going to take another dry paint called Praxetti White. And we're going to use our small dry brush first. Get it into the paint and get that working. Make sure there's plenty of it off the brush. And we're going to just start to highlight that hair detail a bit. And we want to particularly hit it on the top areas and where this the main sort of curls back on itself in towards the helm. We want that to become quite bright. Now we do need to be careful with this because we might risk getting some of the Praxetti White onto the armour. We don't necessarily want to do that. However, the Wraithbone dry brush is fairly bright anyway and it may not be just as noticeable if we make a mistake at this point. But still want to be a bit more careful as we do this. But we really want this hair to, this mane of, of hair or whatever, this plume, we want that to really stand out. Now, that's all we're going to do for that, because now we're going to move on to some ink. And we're going to use Green Stuff World Intensity Ink, Sanguinium Red, or, sa yeah, sang Sanguinium Red. This is going to need two or three coats. So I will show you the first coat going down. And when the first coat's down, we'll let it dry, and then we will push on with the next one. So this stuff is great for building up colour. This ink in particular is definitely one of my favourites. It's just so punchy and using this on a banshee to do that classic red plume hair is absolutely perfect for it because of the just how intense the colour is once you've built it up over a couple of layers. Again, we've got to be careful here though. We don't want to mess up that armor color that we've just spent the first part of the, the tutorial on. And because the ink is transparent, the dry brushing that we just did with the Praxetti White will help maintain this brightness and help the, the highlights really pop. Oh, 
and we don't want to streak the ink too much. We want to make sure we get get it down on as smooth a layer as possible. So to be fair, your first couple of layers are going to look a little more pinky than you'd want them to be, and that's okay. Remember, we're going to be doing multiple coats here. So that's what you're going to get after one coat, pretty much. It's a little bit watery, it's a little bit thin, but we're going to let each coat dry, and we'll apply roughly three of them. And this is the only main major piece of red detail I want on the miniature, so this is the standout piece for her. So we're going to let this finish the, the first coat off, going to let it dry, and then I'm going to do the next two coats, and you'll see what I mean in the end. It's going to be very bright and very poppy. With the ink on the hair now dry, we can have a look at just how vibrant this has actually turned out. And if you're neat enough with it, and you're careful enough with it, that dry brush and then two layers of ink, basically two layers of ink, will get you this lovely looking, really lush and vibrant hair. And that's what's really making this miniature stand out. Now, we can always say later on we want to highlight this a bit more. What I would recommend if you're going to go and do that is to take an orange uh, of some description, either an Army Painter one or um, any of the, the Citadel ones, and just give the uppermost areas just a little bit of a hit with a dry brush or a little bit of hard lining if you want to as well. However, for making it a tabletop ready miniature, absolutely fine. Uh, there's enough definition in there, there's enough shade, there's enough highlight for now. Uh, particularly from the front, it looks quite nice from the front, that contrast with the, the bone colour on the armour. Now, we're going to go into a bit of a base coating step, so there's four colours I'm going to be challenging now, or, or taking on now. The first one is going to be Retributor Armour. This is going to be for the hilt of the sword. The little piece at the bottom of the sword is also going to be in gold. The necklace with the, well, it's not really a necklace, is it? Uh, the holding, or the holder for the uh, stone in the center of her chest is going to go gold. Uh, we have a few other details as well. There's a lot of little runes and, and belt buckles and stuff. Those are all going to go gold. To complement that, we'll then move on to Steel Legion Drab, and this is going to be for the pistol holster, the pouch on her hip, and there's a few straps and stuff holding all of this together. I want to have those in that brown color because we're going to be um, washing those down, make it look a bit more like a, a leather strap. Again, keeping that contrast up of being able to see every part of the miniature. After that, we're then going to give the blade of the sword a base coat of lead belcher, probably a thin coat, maybe more than one thin coat, possibly even two, who knows? Duncan probably doesn't watch these anyway. Uh, just to begin that metallic work, and then we'll move on from there. So the fourth color we're going to be introducing is another contrast paint, which is Warp Lightning. This is going to be for her tabard, or for her, her cloth, whatever this loincloth tabard is, and this piece on her arm. This is going to denote her as a howling banshee of uh, Bealtan, 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 Baltan, Bealtan. Uh, that particular craft world. We're going to go nice and simple with this uh, and just use that as the, the accentuating colour that would match in with an army. Uh, I know Bealtan is basically white with green, so I'm thinking, you know, bone, and she's going to retain that green in the tabard that she's wearing. Uh, there is going to be one more step I will do off camera as well, and it's going to be picking out uh, the gemstones the ones I want to be gemstones in this case, because not all of them are going to be gemstones. Uh, picking them out in um, this layer color, white scar. We're going to be picking them out because we're going to be coloring those later on. Um, yes, and the eye lenses as well are also going to go white scar. So we'll be doing that off camera um, because that's a very difficult thing for me to do. However, I am going to start with the green and we're going to do her tabard in this warp lightning. This is quite a heavy contrast paint. It's very um, translucent, I think. No, it's more opaque, sorry. So when we start to apply it, we're starting to build up that nice green, and maybe one coat will be enough, but two might give us a bit of extra depth in the part. So we're going to continue on with this, 
get all the other base coating steps done and out of the way and from then we'll move on and uh, start to add a little bit of detail. With all our base coats now down uh, we can have a look at what we've got and we're starting to get some real detail and contrast built in uh, to our banshee here. So the next step I was going to do the white on the, um, the gems but I decided there's a shading step first at least. So we're going to go in with some Agrax Earth Shade and we're going to calm down the gold a little bit. So, and the leather actually, the pouches as well. So we're going to get into here and start to shade in some of these little details here. And some of them are going to be a little bit awkward to get at Hence why I'm, I'm moving so much. Uh, but what I'm trying to aim for here is to get the gold to have a little bit of a shade to it. So that the parts themselves that are gold and the parts that are the, the leather or the fabric for the, the pouches have a bit of shade in there. Now we could use a contrast paint over these, but I think at times it's good to not rely on it too much to do everything for you. Sometimes a little bit of traditional painting and washing is definitely the, the better way to go. But it's all personal preference really. Okay, bring that around there. And then we can work on the sword hilt, which again, We'll just get a good layer of shade onto that. And down at the bottom there too. I have noticed a few, or at least a couple of places where I've, I've touched the, the bone armour with a colour I didn't want to. Um, hopefully those won't be just as prevalent, I might try and fix them later. Um, so yeah, just a, a case of being careful with it. But I mean, that's that's something I, I've already preached about anyway during this this video, so I'll not preach about it too much more. Okay, and then we have the ring down her on her left ankle, which I did in gold as well because I thought it just balanced the model out a little bit you know there's a lot of gold detail further up and not a lot down uh, lower on her body so I figured if we did that in gold it would balance things out quite nicely and I think it does so <clears throat> with that done and out of the way we can then move on to layering the sword up and we're going to use runefang steel on that blade uh, just to really heighten the the level of shine. I need the sword to be as shiny as I can get it because I'm going to be putting a contrast paint over it once I have that achieved. So let's get in there with the rune fang. And this is me applying it as thinly as possible as well. So we might even do a, a second coat of this off camera, just to <clears throat> just to really heighten that shine. So that's the majority of the blade done like that. I think I'm happy enough. To say that'll do. <clears throat> now we can finally move on to um, applying some white to the gems and like I said before we're going to be using some white scar for this. I'll move you back into a bit of focus and I think I've shaken this up enough so hopefully my, br <laughs> my, hopefully my brushwork is tidy enough to, to pull this off. Um, if it's not Hey, none of us are perfect. So let's pick out some gems real quick. Oh, I see I've missed one right on her, her 
right thigh there, so that's a bit of a pain. I'm going to have to come back and do that with the gold. That seems tidy enough for the eye. Now, can we do it twice? And in reverse. Not terrible. <laughs> Not terrible. So, let's just pick out a few more here. So this one on the arm's probably dry. Something like that. And let's pick one on that arm there. Sharpen my brush tip up a little bit. Probably do the ones on the sword hilt as well. Because we've got one there. It makes sense to have gems there on the swords anyway, so. There's one on the other side too. Okay, just a little bit of white there. Then we can move on to this one on her chest. And then there's one down on the top of her tabard. I think we'll do this one further down her leg as well. Sort of my rule of thumb is if we've painted the detail gold, we may as well do that as a gem. You know, it looks like it's been there, it's placed there purposefully. Whereas the ones on her legs and her thighs here, for example, and there's one on the side of her head, feel more like pieces of wraithbone, shaped wraithbone on the armor. Uh, like we could do this as a gem at the back, but we've already got a gem on her arm here and on her sword that's visible and one on her arm. So it's kind of making sure that we've... Uh, pointed out the, the gems that we want to be there on purpose and actually have them serve that purpose. So, off camera, I'm going to probably give another layer of runefang to the sword blade. I'm going to correct myself, paint this little piece in gold and then paint the white on it. And then we can come back and um, we can actually work on the gems and the eye lenses and we'll see how much character we manage to get out of her from that. So with all my um, little corrections and extra layers done, uh, I've given every gem another layer of the white, including the ones in the eyes, and the blade has another layer of uh, runefang steel on it. So, <clears throat> we're going to start with the gems and the eyes. So the gems, I'm going to go with the technical uh, soulstone blue, because I just really like it. I like the way it sits after it's it's dry. So. This is a, uh, like a gel, so if you've never used the technicals before like this, um, this one and um, Spirit Stone Red, they act a bit like a gel, so they're semi-transparent and um, they sort of, they dry gloss, but we're not worried about that. What we are worried about is retaining a bit of transparency in the gem. A bit like that. Now, what I can do, to be a bit more cheeky, is add another dot of it towards the bottom like that. And now we suddenly have a bit of depth to that colour. So it's not just a, a flat pale blue, it actually has a bit of definition to it now with that extra lump sort of gathering at the bottom of it. So we're going to do that with all the gems, we're going to make them all blue, because I love 
how punchy this color is. Uh, not all of them are going to turn out like the chest one, but the chest one is very important, so. Hold up on the arm, and then add a couple of extra touches to the bottom, so that we get that, that depth going again. And let's go down onto our tabard, because we have two down here. And then if I've put too much on, I can pull away from the top a bit more. Like that. So that we get that sort of effect of depth there. And see them further down. Happy to leave that one just a little bit darker because it's more in shadow. And then we have sword take some off on my thumb there and remove some of the the color away so that we have a a little bit of a glint plus i love how the the blue really contrasts and pops on this armor and our, the general color scheme and we'll get this last one on the sword You know, that already looks a lot more interesting, uh, especially if you're further away from the miniature, you can see this blue and the closer you get to it, the more you get to appreciate the colors, the color play that's going on here. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the red. And the red is Spirit Stone Red. Surprise, surprise. It's the exact same kind of material. It's like a gel, it's like a transparent gel. And we're going to be using that on our eye lenses. So, see if I can get the lid to open properly for me. And hopefully, I don't have too much water on my brush either. Right. So, what I'm attempting to do here with the eye lenses is basically fill the space that the lens has. So. I want the red to run into the darker part of the edge of the lens as well. Because then we get something very vibrant with an edge to it as well. It looks very lively, that red, with the, the white undercoat. I think that's quite an aggressive looking red, especially against the hair, it's still brighter than the hair. And if we want to, we can go in and maybe remove a bit from the center of that lens to start to accentuate the fact that there's a white under it so it sort of looks a bit more alive and a bit more aggressive. Bit like that so that is not bad looking at all now one final step and then we get to go and do our matte varnish and paint, and paint the the base uh paint the base black in fact there's actually going to be two more steps i'm going to do a wee cheeky bit as well now on the blade we're going to go with ethermatic blue our contrast paint and all i want to do to this is just give that as the paint says, a bit more of an ethereal look um, because metal blades with Eldar just, <laughs> yeah, it's okay, but it's not um, what I would consider very Eldar-like. So we want a touch of something going on with the blade, in my opinion. There has to be a, a level of unnaturalness. Is that a word? Not sure. A 
but I definitely want the blade to have some kind of odd quality about it that just takes away from the fact that it's essentially painted in metallic. So something like that. And around on the other side. You know, something that when you look at it, you go, that's not just a metal blade, there's something else going on with it. And I'm not sure if I'm happy with how that side looks. I think maybe going a bit heavier with this, because this is a, one of the thin, one of the very transparent contrast paints. So I think that looks a bit more interesting. It's certainly not steel anymore. It's something else. Now, one last cheeky little thing, I think. And I need to just, so I'm sort of ad-libbing here at this point going, yeah, I don't have a plan for this part, but let's just do it anyway. Um, we're gonna quickly take some uh, Basilicanum Grey because she has something at her feet. She's leaping from a little piece of terrain and I very quickly just want to give that a coat of Basilican and Grey. It probably wouldn't be Grey, really. It looks like Wraithbone to me. But it would be an absolute shame and a crime not to do something with it before painting the base black and calling the tutorial finished, right? Because I, I don't necessarily need to be doing basing on these videos because Jerry does a fantastic job of showing you different techniques that are useful for that. So... The plan now is to let all this dry, give our Banshee a coat of matte varnish, paint that base black, and then we'll call it done. So we'll come back and have a look at the finished piece. And here we have it, our Howling Banshee is now finished. Uh, I've given her a coat of matte varnish, painted the base black. The Basilicanum Grey looks all right on the little piece of basing. Now, one thing I did change, or did do, uh, was take a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade and I just put a little bit of it into the two vents either side of the mouth grill and into the mouth grill because they just weren't as defined as I really wanted them to be. Now I probably should have done that earlier or I should have figured that out earlier but as I before I went for the um, uh, varnish step I realized actually that's not as visible and prominent as I want it to be because it adds to that visage or visage of this aggressive woman with a sword and a pistol, she's coming to get you. And I like that shape of helmet, that face mask is very intimidating and uh, very aggressive in the stance. And that's, that's what makes a Howling Banshee for me is that sheer aggression with this bone white armor, this big flash of angry red hair. And um, yeah, just the, the elegance, the elegance mixed with aggression is really really nice looking i think it's one of the best models in the eldar range to be honest um but yeah that's my opinion i hope you like how she's turned out and i hope you've enjoyed watching uh the video so if you have please let me know uh down in the comments below anything you would have done differently or anything you thought oh i never tried that before um do let me know in the comments uh, everything's great i i like reading those and uh, occasionally replying to some of you so you know hey we're all learning we're all having fun and uh, that's that's the main thing so as always guys thank you so much for watching take care stay safe and until next time see you again soon go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on